is better now. What's up, Jeff? Can you, uh, you can hear me, right? Let's see. Um, let me see. Can you hear me, Jeff? Is it audible? Yeah, can you hear me now? Is it yeah, good? yeah, man, I got you, bro. Okay, I got you. you. I was just untangling a whole thing huh? of headphones because I don't use headphones on this phone ever, but I know it's good for Facebook oh, Live when this joint. So not okay. even the quality, dude. There's feedback if you don't. I've just you seen this happen it. too much. So I see. You should get the AirPods because they're like wireless. Yeah, but dog. I ain't I ain't bougie <laughs> like you, dude. And you know, there's yeah. there's some stuff about EMFs. You can Google some EMFs uh, frying oh, yeah. your brain right now. It's like you're in a freaking. Sure. Uh, it's like you're in a uh, microwave right now on this Facebook yeah. Live. So no worries. Cook yeah, that brain. For sure, for sure. Well, there's neur Neuralink's coming out, so that's probably gonna gonna affect us more. But anyways, um, but yeah, I just wanna you know introduce you. I haven't really done Facebook Live before. But um, this is, um, you know, I just want people to know who you are, first of all. Um, Nicholas Barely, he's the CEO of the Billion Dollar Brotherhood, which is a community of men uh, looking to grow together in health, wealth, and relationships. And so on this video, I just wanted to share with people, um, like, what it, what it takes to kind of build your personal brand. Because, you know, I've been helping you build Instagram, and I've been doing Instagram for a while, but I just kind of want um, people to here i guess your journey of kind of um what that's been like to building your personal brand and also uh what you know what are some things i guess you've learned along the way for personal branding and what you think about that so, totally dude so first off thanks for creating a space for people to be able to learn stuff like this you know yeah. as you know i was 60 pounds overweight when i was going through high school mm -hmm. and when i wanted to lose the weight like that was keeping me from going out there and building a business and putting myself out there but i didn't think that i could change it there was no one that I really knew that could tell me what to do or, or had done it before, and I didn't have anyone that I trusted. So when you create Facebook Lives like this, it creates a space where people can get help right away. So yeah. there's multiple things, right? There's the emotional side of, hey, I feel like I have a message I want to get out there in the world. And if I were to ask people listening to this Facebook Live, they probably all would say, hey, I've got a message. I want to get it out there. And if you're even listening right now, if you have a message and you want to get out into the world or you feel like... At some point you're gonna do that, go ahead and comment below. Let me know. Yes, I'm gonna I need have a message I want to get out there. Don't worry, I won't make you share it right now on Facebook Live. So we all on that side know that. But on the logical side, there's people out there that building an income is part of life. Right? Back in the day it used to be through trade. Now we don't use trade where Jeff just jumped on. If Jeff back in the day wanted to have my apples, he might make me a spear because he knows how to make spears and I knew how to grow apples. We would trade for that. But if he didn't have any value for my apples or I didn't have any value for a spear, we wouldn't trade. And so because of that, there wouldn't be an exchange. So what we did is we created currencies, right? And people used to carry these large lumps of, of silver and gold, all these things around, coins, whatever. And then we kind of transitioned out of that to paper currency and now digital currency and all these different things. So when I look at that, there's only a few ways to make money, right? You have to go out there and learn how to make money, number one. You need to learn how to keep your money, meaning don't just, if you make $20,000 a month and you spend $22,000 a month, you're still screwed. 
So sure. keeping it, learning how to understand how to manage it, and then there's having your money work for you and grow. But the first phase, like it's really tough to have money go grow for you if you haven't made money. And the reason I say that in a roundabout way is the fact that what are people doing to make money? People look at things that I do growing a business and they're like, oh, uh, I remember I used hashtag money once. Like, and it was actually a part of a different sentence. It was like, it was an event I was at and in the event had the word money. But I remember people attacking me. They're like, oh, you're gonna hashtag money, talk about money, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dog, you, you work for 40 hours plus a week mm -hmm. to make money. Like that's why yeah. these people were working yeah. and you do it. Exactly. If I'm going to work 40 hours a week, I might as well make a lot of money so sure. that I could choose sure. what I want to do with it, my fam, yeah. whatever. So when I saw that, I started realizing, well, what's the fastest way to be able to make money? And I started looking at, okay, Porsche, who knows the, the CEO of Porsche? And I thought nobody does, but why do people buy these Porsches for like 200 grand plus? Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, because they've proven themselves over so many years. I right? like, if you want to take the slow route, have a message, have a product, have a service, and just make it about the brand. Mm -hmm. Because people don't follow brands, they follow people. This is sure. why Nike would get people <laughs> like Michael Jordan. Because people yeah. follow Michael and they're like, well, I'm not a good face, but that guy could be the face of this shoe. And if he's the face of the shoe, people are going to buy because they trust him. Sure. They like him. You look at realtors, which is one of the oldest forms of sales or business in the world is the ability to buy homes or right? real estate. I look at realtors and I think if a realtor works for a big company, they might put the name there, right? Mm -hmm. Something like Keller Williams. Mm -hmm. They'll put the name on the sign and people will go, Oh, Keller Williams, that's a good company. Mm -hmm. But let's say they aren't working for these big companies. What do they do? They put their face on the, on the sign and they say for sale, and it's a face of someone smiling, looking all cheesy and crap. Mm -hmm. Well, why, why was that invented? The reason why it was invented was because people said this saying back in the day, which is, oh, that's a face that I can trust. Yeah. And notice that people trust people and faces. So that I saw the quickest way I look at the billionaires mm -hmm. today. You got uh, mm -hmm. Facebook. Who owns Facebook? Do you know? Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Okay. Of course, yeah. And who, who owns Amazon? Jeff Bezos. Okay. And who owns Tesla? Elon Musk. Yeah. Yeah. And they've become billionaires or multi-billionaires or the richest person in the entire world very, very quickly and accelerated. And while other people had to have brands for years and years and years or just pay all these other people to be that face, and that's when I noticed the power that people followed people, not brands. So if I was going to advertise, which they've done this now, where you advertise on a business page or a meaning a business page, like billion dollar brotherhood or billion dollar body or whatever that name is, unless you're like the guy who's been around for the last hundred years, mm -hmm. they noticed that if I were to market as Nicholas Barely, I'd actually probably get more clicks. They would go, Oh, that's the person like this is a human being. This isn't just okay. a company. And sure. notice that these people became the face mm -hmm. that people could trust. Mm -hmm. They were speaking the message. And because of that, they got lots of you know, like trust factor and they were able to accelerate and grow the business. So when I started sure. seeing this and I had friends like Kaylin Poulin that runs Lady Boss, the CEO of Lady Boss, uh, Brandon Poulin and, 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 and Kaylin, they used to tell me, Nicholas, stop talking about the company, yeah. build your brand. Because when yeah. you build your brand, check this out. If I were to sell a company, let's say I were to build one of our companies, something like our, our post-production podcast agency. We take the podcast, edit them all, edit the videos, give it back to people. Let's say I were to sell that. Well, if all the customers knew the company, well, now I gotta start over from scratch. But if everyone knew me, and then they knew the companies that I had, and they trusted me, and they trusted the companies, and we did a great job, well, now all of a sudden, when I move on, I get to keep all that influence in people, and I can direct them. So sure. a small piece sure. of this that people look at is like influencers on Instagram or YouTube. And a lot of them have a huge amount of following and then companies pay them to be able to promote their stuff. Yeah. So what ends up happening is these influencers every day, no matter what they do, if they yeah. were to grab my book right here and they're like, Oh, I just picked up this book. I got 1.5 million followers and this mm. book just blew my mind. Like I couldn't believe that it was $11 on Amazon and it'll ship to you with a physical copy. I think I would have paid $300. That's crazy. Go get the book. If they were to say that yeah. everyone trusts them. Sure. And so they'll go sure. buy the book. They don't even care if it's me. They just trust that person. 
And when you do this for your own brand, you're able to actually make an impact in your own business rather than all day saying, I just picked up a Snickers. Hey guys, let yeah. me take a quick, quick drink of my Bang Energy drink before I do this thing because I want to put a little promo in there. Sure. And it's because people follow people, people yeah. trust people, not brands, exactly. always yeah. since the beginning of time. And the more you can build yours, and you are. The last thing that I'll, I'll button this up with is you're already building a personal brand every day. Yeah. Every time you leave your house, if you're leaving and piece of junk clothes and not being nice to people, well then people know you as that and that's your brand. So whether sure. you're building a business around it, you have a personal brand already sure. and what people are feeling, knowing and, and liking about you or not liking about you. And people are either talking about you, talking good, talking bad or not talking at all. Yeah. So are you even a part okay. of the conversation is number one. Number two is are you part of the good part? Okay, and I think uh, there's someone, Angel asks, how do you make yourself someone wants to follow? Yeah, that's a good question, Angel. So first off, I wouldn't even think about that because then all of a sudden it's like, well, I'm going to try to do these things to get people to follow me, and if they don't follow me, then I'm going to keep changing who I am to, to get people to follow me. Here's the yeah. first thing to think about. If you were to do business back in the day, you had to do business based on your market. So right mm -hmm. now I'm in Austin, Texas. Let's say 100 years ago, I wanted to do business and I wanted to teach surfing. Mm -hmm. Probably couldn't teach surfing in the middle of Texas. Why? <laughs> because there wouldn't be a market for it because there's no location. There's no ability to do it. Yeah. Now, I could teach surfing from Texas online. I could reach surfers all over the world because it's not just based on one location. Yeah. And so what I found is this. If you act like someone that you're not, you'll, people will be attracted to that. If you act like someone that you are, and I mean your best self, not, not just yourself, but your best self, which is always growing, always changing, people will be attracted to that as well. Yeah. And so I wouldn't be thinking about what can I do to get followers, but I, if you look at the psychology of what people follow, it's usually two things, either people that they wanna be like, so they look at them and they go, dang, that guy drives a Ferrari, that's freaking badass, I wanna drive a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. And you can do that naturally. You know, like yeah. I just moved into this <clears throat> epic home here in Austin and there's people that message me and go, the life that you're living is just the life that I want. I want the wife. I want the kid. I want to spend time with them. I want to be in the home. I want to be able to do all this fun stuff. That's what I want. And so they're looking at my normal life, my actual life and saying, dude, I want to be just like that. That's number one. The other side that I've been taught more from one of my mentors, Cole Hatter, is someone that they're just like. So he used to sell real estate education. And he would go up on stage and there was another salesperson that he told me about that used to wear a $250,000 watch. So he'd go up on stage, he'd speak and say, hey, you know how much this watch is worth? And the people would be like, I don't know. And he'd be like, quarter mil. So people wow. would sit there and be like, dude, that's a house on his wrist. Like, yeah, that dude's yeah. got a house. I'd love that, dude. I'm like, dude, that's yeah. sick. Let me see the watch. This guy's legit. He'd wear the nice suit, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so he was always the person that people wanted to be like. He's, they're like, he does sure. real estate. He's successful. And yeah, yeah. obviously he would also point to that his family was more important than that and whatever. But mm -hmm. Cole, he would, if he didn't have to wear a freaking blazer, Cole wouldn't wear a blazer. He'd wear Chuck Taylor's a freaking t-shirt. Yeah. And he'd go up there and he'd be like, hey guys, I've Don't done over worry. a thousand deals in real estate and I'm just like you. Yeah, okay. And people are like, oh my gosh, I love uh, this guy. He's so successful, he's relatable. done it, but he's just like me. And exactly, that relatability yeah. is what I think is missing right now is, sure, you know, sure. I'm, I'm in an office right now, but I'm in a home office. And yeah. if an entrepreneur is watching this right now in the middle of the day, what are they going to be watching in? They're probably going to be watching in their home office, yeah. which means that they're like, dude, Nicholas is in his home office, Ray's in his friend's office, hanging out in <laughs> San Diego. And, yeah. and we're just like each other, dude. We're hanging out in the sure. same spot. Uh, yeah. Lady boss, right? If you were to see them, like my She's doing things in the kitchen. She's doing things while she's uh, in the laundry room. She's doing things in her house with her kids. Because mm -hmm. people watching are in the same spots and it makes them feel like, man, we're just alike. Yeah. Pretty cool. So like, I guess for you too, I know you have um, like a crazy story. And, and for those of you guys who don't know Nicholas, definitely check out his profile, like his story, because it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, and you came from being 60 pounds overweight, being like broke, making 20K a year as a carpet cleaner, um, to marry the woman of your dreams and making, you know, seven figures with your business and, you know, pretty much impacting lives, you know, the, the way that uh, you want to. And <clears throat> I think a lot of people, you know, personal branding is the future, but a lot of people are lost. I know even on Instagram, you know, when we first uh, worked too, 
it was just you're kind of confused like why aren't people you know seeing my stuff even though i'm posting good quality stuff um like content and a lot of that has to do with uh, the way that you post certain content right and so um, a lot of people are wanting to grow but they don't know the certain strategies like that help them go viral or make it engaging right and so kind of what are your thoughts on that um because yeah yeah because that, that's no, it's a good it's a good too. question so first Tell off i think that oh. i think our stories first well, off can you hear me still yeah well i don't know if you want to start with your story first because um someone wants or if, if you want yeah definitely check out nicholas's mm -hmm. speech let me teach on let me teach on something real quick because I think this sure. should be really good for you because I know you have a webinar coming up, and yeah. you're going to teach on some of this stuff. So what I believe real quick, mm -hmm. when I was first starting and you're touching on all these things about my story, I I thought a couple things. Number one, I thought that my story wasn't relevant. Mm -hmm. I didn't think why would I tell about all my struggles when why would anyone want to buy from me if they knew that I sucked at what I do now, and that yeah. I failed. I, everyone always told me because I started in the health and fitness space because I lost 60 pounds. They always told me my body is my billboard. They said, if people want to hire you, well, they're going to look at you. And that's the only reason they're going to hire you. And that's a piece of it, right? You can't go start a business and be like, I suck. And I'm going to do all the work for you on something yeah. that I suck. That's not going to work. Yeah. So that was number one is I had to figure out that my story was valuable. Second, I struggled with the fact that I didn't think my story was good enough. So think about this as well. Many of us, we look at Lewis Howes or we look at Gary Vee and we look at all these people yeah. and we look at their stories and we think my story's not as good. Like I wasn't as broke as they were. I wasn't as fat as they were. I haven't made as much money as they have. I haven't got as fit as these people. I'm not, I'm not there yet. So we always think I have to become better. I have to be the best to be able to even share my story. Here's the news flash. Gary Vee's $200, $200 million company is nothing compared to Apple's hundred billion dollars in the bank. Mm -hmm. But he's not yeah. sitting there saying, well, until I get a hundred billion dollars in the bank in my checking account, well, then I'm not going to share my story. Mm -hmm. No, he's documenting the story forever. So here's why I'm saying this is because I truly believe that every single person has a story or a company that they've created because of a problem in the world. And they share that story and they think that their story isn't powerful because it's not getting traction. Mm -hmm. And what I would say is that no matter where you're at, how small your business, how big your business, whatever the thing is, how bad your problems were, how good they were. My wife grew up in a good family and she still had problems. Sure. I grew up in a great family, but I had issues as well. Mm -hmm. And I had many more broke moments, right? $135 for rent. I slept on the floor in a sleeping bag with two other people in the room. And I used to go to the grocery stores and walk around hoping yeah. that someone would ask to buy me food if I just yeah, wandered around crazy. enough. Uh -huh. So that's, that's embarrassing. And I did, I couldn't even afford food after I got married. I was doing it on the credit card. I didn't have enough in the debit. And so that's a different story that my wife, like she didn't go through those same things. She had a great family. But the things that she went through will relate to people that my story won't. So sure. she can actually sure. reach people through her authentic story that I can't reach. Mm -hmm. Whereas I can reach people that she can't reach. So once story. you know your story is important and you know that it's good and you know that you can't, you're not going to hide it until you become super successful or something like this, which I hear a ton. I'm just going to, I'm going to work in silence. Oh, okay, yeah, cool, yeah. dude. Like whatever, get out of here. So what I mean by that is that uh -huh. let's say that you feel like your story isn't important. Well, that means that it's time to, you have a great story. It's time to connect with Ray, jump on one of his webinars, learn how to use the platforms. Because what I found is that as soon as your story gets out there, you may not need a story shift. You may need an audience shift. Hmm. I told the audience same story shift. over yeah. and over again for years. <laughs> and then I got in front of the right people and everyone started buying from me. Wow. Nothing had changed. And I realized okay. I was trying to change my story, change my company, change my product rather yeah. than actually bringing it to the right people. And I believe everyone has so, that. They probably have a good product. They probably have a good story, but they want to learn how to use the platforms and learn it from people like you. What if, so what if, um, well, thank you for that. And, you know, um, just what if some people think, hey, my story isn't that great. Or, you know, for some people, they feel like, you know, I haven't, you know, gone through these crazy experiences, but does my story still matter, right? And yeah. what would you say? To that. Okay, so I'm gonna go super fast over this. Number yeah. one is yeah. sometimes our story holds us back from even sharing anything. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, if whatever we're afraid to share out in the world, 
we're actually afraid people will find out. So we won't ever put ourselves out there or gain an influence personally because yeah. we're scared that one day people will find out who we really are and that yeah. we're not this person that they think we are. And so sure. we'll just self-sabotage. So sure. look at Eminem. Eminem mm -hmm. was afraid to go up on stage, afraid to rap, didn't fit in. And actually think about this in depth real quick. If you look at 8 Mile, if you look at the last battles, notice that the successful people that he was rapping against, battling with, they actually had disconnected from the community. So yeah. how did he get all the people in the community to relate with him? He goes, hey, everybody in the 313, right? Yeah, Who has the same area code as me? Yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. still live in the 313. These guys yeah. don't because they're too rich. So everyone's like, this guy's just like me. Okay. And then the second thing that he it's did really was that he shared his story. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He was like, I am white. I am a bum. I do live in a trailer with my mom. Mm. So now he true, wasn't true. afraid of what everyone was going to say about him, mm -hmm. which is probably why he got so nervous yeah. because everyone could make fun of him. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, you can't make fun of me anymore. I've made fun of myself and I'm mm -hmm. still here standing. So who cares? Mm -hmm. And at the end of that, mm -hmm. nobody had anything bad to say against him. And it did the opposite of what he thought everyone liked him more and it blew up his it career bit, yeah and so that's was, number one is get when you share your story with even your friends first things that you're scared to share it takes away the fear of rejection oh they find this out about me they're going to reject me mm -hmm. so it's a good practice mm -hmm. start first with your friends and then figure out if i told this story and i overcame it could this be beneficial to other people sure i'm going to show sure. them hey have you felt this way i felt this way as well and this is what i found that helped me Dude, yeah. people are going to love that. The second thing was, again, I thought, hey, I've only lost 60 pounds and I'm not even that fit compared to these other people. Yeah. Why would I share that story? That's even embarrassing. I was fat and now I'm kind of in shape. Yeah. But what was so interesting is that, again, my story could reach people that other people's couldn't. And I started noticing that every problem that I went through, if I overcame it, I was able to go back to people that had the same problem and share with them the blueprint. So every time awesome. I had problems, mm -hmm. Like you just saw today a testimonial from Akbar, right? I just mm -hmm. consulted a guy on one of his events and in his company, and he made this video for us that was like, oh my gosh, like I cannot believe that these things happened to me. And the reason I came up with those formulas and the reason why he was so impacted is because I went through the struggle. Okay. And I had to overcome okay. it and I had to find solutions. And then sure, I brought those sure. solutions to him because he was going through the same problems. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is first, just knowing that your story is relevant. I remember my first speaking engagement was 40 people. And I decided in this speaking engagement that I was going to talk about how I was fat and how I got fat mm -hmm. and how it made me feel and how it was like, I was like, it's not about losing weight. It's about dealing with the emotions of why I was fat in the first place. And if I dealt with those, then I'm going to be fit. I told the story. I couldn't even get through it, dude. I was crying. Like it was so embarrassing. I didn't even get to teach the people. And yeah. still to this day, people talk about that one moment where I shared that story. It shifted everything for them. We did over $20,000 mm -hmm. in revenue because people were yeah. like, I trust you because I'm going through similar struggles Same or thing, yeah. you went through bigger <clears throat> struggles than me. If you could do it, I can do it. Sure. And we had nine people buy from us sure. at over 3000 bucks. Wow. And I was like, it's like, I didn't even teach you anything. All I did was tell you yeah. my story and how I overcame. And they were yeah. like, oh my gosh. And you know what's crazy, Raymond? Check this out. Mm. There was more fit people there than I was. Yeah. Like there was other fitness people that they could have hired if it was based on sure, their body sure. and if it was based on their athleticism. But dude, nobody relates with eight pack abs. Yeah. Like you need to have results. Sure. Don't get me wrong. But if you haven't been through the struggle, well then dog, you ain't relating with people. I had been through the struggle. So they were like, you got eight pack abs, but you're probably genetically gifted and all that crap. Mm -hmm. I want to hire the guy that was fat and now he's in shape yeah. because he knows my struggle. So yeah. I focused on those people. On those nice. And so you kind of built your business from your story, which is, I feel like a really interesting way to go about it instead of just like selling a product, you know, it's like a story, story selling, right? Pretty much that's, that's and even called, with though. products, though, products so. that have a story are the ones that sell the best and have the highest investment. Yeah. I, just, I just interviewed a guy who sells watches. He takes pocket watches from the 1900s to the 1950s that are worth almost nothing. And he yeah. makes them into a watch. And it's the story that makes these watches three grand, three grand to ten grand. But it's the story of how it was put together that yeah. makes it valuable and sells the thing. 
And even in today's day and age, there's a quote out there that says, if you say it, you could be wrong, but if they say it, it's gospel. It's true. They, they know it. The mm -hmm. best way to get people to build a belief is to tell a story, just mm -hmm. like we were programmed thousands of years ago. The only Sorry things that too. I remember about anything is when there's story. When I read Think and Grow Rich, I'm like, three feet from gold. There was a guy that was digging for gold, didn't find it, sold three it for feet. pennies. And, and I know that because of the story. And the story taught me something that no one had to tell me. I learned True. it through the story. And it's when like you tell a, the right um, stories, it teaches. It's kind of like parables, right? Like parables, like 100%. Jesus, like Jesus taught in parables, and it's probably a reason why he did that, right? Because it's it sticks in your mind. So, well, um, he said things that people uh, didn't believe, right? Which was like he would say things like "Drink my blood and eat my flesh." That was one thing he said. Yeah. Everyone's like, <laughs> what? Uh, Can, like I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. And and he did that okay. to, like, just do little patterns or ups, and people probably have thoughts of why he did that. But there was the other yeah. side, which was like, hey. If a tree doesn't bear fruit, why would we keep watering it? And they're like, I'm a farmer. I know exactly what you mean by that. Yeah. I wouldn't – I would uproot that and I would plant a new seed and I'd grow a new tree because it's not bearing any fruit. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, yeah, Then like stop doing stupid stuff with your life that doesn't benefit you. And they're like, I get it. Whereas he, if he yeah. said, hey, if you do this, this is going to happen, they may say like, yeah. oh, I don't know what he's talking about. You know, like – yeah. So he was the best at it. That's why he was able to yeah. amass in three and a half years, dude, the biggest following on planet Earth. I mean, he still has billions of followers. Even Trump the other True. day said, hey, I'm not the most famous person in the world. Jesus is the most famous person in the world. And the homie preached for three and a half years and died 2,000 years ago. And he's still well, the most famous well, person. Well, I feel like the craziest thing people don't realize is for 30 years, he didn't do anything but like hone, hone in on his craft, right? I guess that's what you would say and then and then three and a half years is ministry and then and then now it's all over the world which is crazy but um but yeah i know you have another interview right i think in five minutes or so yeah yeah so, so i just uh, tell people tell yeah. people about your master class because i know you're doing sure. a webinar here's the deal with me i hopefully i help people say hey i have a good product i have a good service i want to get out there in the world i have a good story that can go with this but i need to get it out there more mm -hmm. raymond's the guy to help you get the message out there to be able to grow the social influence, right? Like for me, when people would go look at my social, they'd be like, you're amazing, but why is the message not hitting with people on all these social platforms? And you help us get out there where people now look at us for who we are. They go, yeah. man, you guys are legit. Look at how big you guys are on all these social platforms. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, like we've always been legit. You just yeah. judged us because exactly. we didn't have the following. The numbers, and yeah. So help, tell, like... tell people how they can get connected with your masterclass. Uh, yeah, so I'm doing a webinar this Saturday at 11 a.m. Um, and I'm going to go over three growth hacks for your Instagram, uh, for your personal brand. And this is teaching you things that I've learned from building like millions of followers. Um, this is things that I've done myself and have uh, learned. So I'm not just regurgitating information from like a Ty Lopez course, you know, like I actually taught. Well, you were the one who yeah. taught in Ty Lopez's yeah. course. Yeah, so it's just, you know, I'm going to teach, um, actually start teaching instead of you know, like hiding myself anymore. And so, yeah, got to put myself out there. And so, um, totally yeah, thank, yeah, thank you, Nick, for hopping on. Thanks, and, um, appreciate it. Yeah. We'll, we'll have a good interview next one. Cool. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. If you guys want to join his interview, just drop yeah. him in and he'll send you the info. Drop. I'm yeah. in, I'm in, I'm in, drop it below. You have nothing to lose, dude. It's a free training. Yeah. Hello? Exactly. Like unless yeah. unless you've got a billion well, Instagram followers or you have so much money that you don't want to be you don't want people to know who you are because they'll try to rob you or something, don't jump yeah. on. But if you're looking to grow sure. your influence and your business, dude, go jump onto that training. Drop I'm in below. Awesome sure. guys. Thanks, Thank Raymond. You. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thank you.